loneliness. Out of all the emotions that humans experience, loneliness might be the most universal. Everyone has felt it at some point in their lives, and whether it's a heartbreak or loss or simply being the odd one out. And yet, even though it's everywhere, loneliness is often seen as a taboo subject. We're taught to put on a brave face and act like everything is okay, even when it's not. The word solitude, it conjures up different ideas, different images for different people. For some, solitude is a place of peace and quiet where they can escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life. And for others, solitude is a place of loneliness, isolation. And still for others, it's simply a state of mind. No matter how you define it, solitude is something that we all need from time to time. It's a chance to recharge our batteries, to reflect on our own lives, to connect with our inner selves. But what about the side of solitude that isn't peaceful, that's isolating, that's too quiet? Loneliness is such a centerpiece that many countries now recognize this as a societal condition. Even the United Kingdom and Japan, they have each appointed an official minister of loneliness. And lately, more and more people have been writing me, saying that they're lonely. You might think this is because they're not married, or maybe they don't have a romantic partner or whatever, but I get people reaching out to me about that kind of love, but... That's not all I'm hearing. People are sharing with me that they're lonely because they're simply alone. I gotta say, I, I feel you. I feel how hard it is to make friends as an adult. You remember when we were kids, and I know kids today, they don't really get the same experience, but we, we used to ride our bikes around the neighborhood and chase down the ice cream truck and run around with the kids from next door. We'd climb trees, we'd have sleepovers and pool parties even. It's almost like friendship was just built into our daily routine. We didn't have to think so hard about how to make friends. You live next door to me, you're my new best friend. We sit next to each other at school, you are officially my new best friend. If only it were that easy as adults. I don't know when it happens, but we, we grow up and our friends just start to drift, just drift away. We go to school, we get married, we have kids, we move, we get busy. We're always busy. And suddenly we look around. We find ourselves a party of one. We may have family and we don't get me wrong, that's wonderful, but no other close relationships in our lives. What the heck? Some experts are calling it a friendship recession. And it's a phenomenon, seriously, at least in the United States. Studies show that we as adults have way fewer friends than we used to as adults. And sadly, it's especially bad for men. One in five single men say that they don't have a single close friendship in their lives. That number one in five, that's five times higher than when it was in 1995. I'm going to repeat all that really quick. One in five single men say they don't have a single close friendship in their lives. And again, that one in five, that's five times higher than it was in 1995. But it's not just men. We're all lonely. We seem to be getting lonelier and lonelier with each generation. I read one study that found Generation Z is the loneliest generation of all. Clearly the situation is serious, and no matter how much of an introvert you are, science says loneliness is just not good for you. It's related to a number of harmful health effects like diabetes, and high blood pressure, Alzheimer's, depression, 
and suicide. Loneliness is the new pandemic. So, if you're feeling alone, if you're feeling lonely, and don't have any close friends, first of all, know that you're obviously not alone. We're all lonely. Some figures say 60 something percent of us are lonely. So it has me thinking, isn't there a way for all of us to come together? I mean, what is it that keeps us from each other? What's getting in the way of developing close friendships with one another? Just like we did when we were kids. Of the recent emails that I receive, which are quite significant, this is a resounding topic. So let's ask, what's keeping us alone? I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. First of all, let's differentiate between lonely and alone. A lot of people enjoy spending time alone. I must confess I do. For some people though, it's the opposite. You might feel lonely even when you have a lot of people around you. But being around other people is it's essential for maintaining our mental health, believe it or not. We are social creatures after all. When we're lonely, it's often because we're not getting the social interaction that we need, which can lead to then feeling isolated, feeling anxious and depressed. If you find that you're always feeling lonely, even when you're surrounded by people, it might be worth taking a closer look at the circle around you. Are they supportive? Are they enriching? Or do they feel draining? Do you feel like you can be yourself or do you have to put on a persona? If your friendships are lacking something you need, don't be afraid to reach out and try to find new friends who might be a better fit. And if you're not sure what it is that you need, that's okay. Sometimes it takes some trial and error to figure out what kind of relationship works best for you. But I think a key step is to really dig deep and figure out your needs. Why are you feeling lonely? What do you need from a friendship? What does a friendship even mean to you? Even writing this episode, I had to stop a number of times and ask myself, what am I looking for in a friend? <laughs> Have you ever asked this question to yourself? I have to be honest, I have not. Now, keep in mind, it's also important to be realistic. I think a lot of us miss the way friendships used to be when we were kids, the, the ease of them, the constantness of them. Our whole worlds revolved around our friends back then. And that was wonderful. I mean, I, I miss it. And I understand that my friendships now as an adult might not look or feel the same way. I might not have a best buddy whose house I can walk over to whenever I want without calling first. I probably won't be having sleepovers every weekend with my friends. That would drive my wife crazy. But does that mean that my friendships can't be deep or meaningful or connected, fulfilling even? Does that mean that we're all just doomed to be lonely from the moment that we hit adulthood? I would like to think not. But we have to keep somewhat of a level of expectancy that our lives do become busier. And that's just a natural byproduct of growing up. We make more commitments. We have more responsibilities. And our social circles tend to dissipate somewhat. It's not to say that we still can't maintain close relationships, but it does require a bit more effort on our part. The key is to be intentional about the relationships in your life. So with the friends that you do have, make time for them, proper time for them, put the phone away. And even if it's just for a quick coffee, make 
time for them. Check in with them regularly. Speaking of being intentional, it's not just about our relationships that thrive with a bit of focus and care. Our health demands the same level of attention. And you know, it's interesting. People often come to me seeking advice on a variety of health topics, and they ask, you know, which supplements are most beneficial? Or what the best diet or exercise regimen might be for their needs, right? While I am here to offer as many useful tips as possible, it's become clear that to me, health is definitely not one size fits all. Let's take a mental stretch here really quick, because I want to share with you today's sponsor, Wild Health. You've heard me talk about them before. I love them. Founded by two emergency room physicians, Wild Health takes a very proactive and very preventative approach to healthcare with something called precision medicine. It's amazing. They use your genetics, biometrics, and lifestyle data to tailor health recommendations specifically for you, covering nutrition, exercise, sleep, supplements, and more to help you function at your best. Imagine knowing that something as simple as adjusting your cortisol levels could help manage stress better. With 50% of all wild health patients seeing improvement. Ah, oh, just amazing. Or learning that a tweak in your lifestyle could significantly reduce your risk of heart disease. Hello, who doesn't want this? This level of personalized care has transformed the lives of many, including yours truly. The insight from my own health report has been eye-opening, making it clear that what works for one person might not work for everyone else. And that's the beauty of Wild Health. They are all about what is for you. Paired with a care team of a precision medicine physician and a health coach accessible through their app, Wild Health is changing the game in healthcare, all from the comfort of your home. And here's something just for comment down listeners. Wild Health is generously offering 20% off the cost of membership with the code CALM. Just head over to wildhealth.com backslash CALM and use the code CALM at checkout. C-A-L-M. Make this commitment to yourself and start by taking control of your health today at wildhealth.com backslash CALM. Because just like building connections can combat loneliness, Taking control of your health is a step towards a happier, healthier you. And thank you, Wild Health. Now, getting back to our subject, we were talking about being intentional with the friends that we have. But if your list is short or non existent, even, guess what? That's amazing. Yes, you heard me correctly. Think of a no friend list as an opportunity to build the kind of friendships you really want. You have a blank canvas to work with. You can take your time getting to know people and finding those who you might have a real connection with. This gives you the chance to focus on meeting new people and building new relationships that are meaningful to you. But I must say, I want to go back. What do you need from a friendship? What does a friendship mean to you? What are you looking for in a friendship? But where, Chad, where do I find such connection, you ask? Here's what I'm thinking for the week. Pick one, or heck, maybe both, of what I'm about to suggest. Number one. Think of one person in your life that you'd like to be close friends with. Not someone you'd maybe like to date or a mentor whose brain you'd like to pick. Someone you can see yourself just being friends with. No expectations. Just connection. Just friends. Most of us have these people in our lives. We just haven't really paid attention to it. We have these acquaintances your kids, friends, parents, or someone you only occasionally see at work, or maybe at church, or the same person behind the checkout counter every single time you go through. People we know, but we've been too scared or felt too awkward to connect with. 
Because grown-ups, well, you know, we don't just become friends with other grown-ups just like that, right? Well, why not? Why not? Now, this week, can you be brave enough to go up to this person and start a simple conversation? Sure, a nice weather icebreaker, but maybe even going to back a few episodes and asking, hey, you know what? On a scale from one to 10, how's your day? It's a conversation, not a marriage proposal. <laughs> Go easy. I know, I know. It can be awkward. I get it. We don't talk to strangers in this day and age. And some ways, starting or having a friendship can be scarier than asking someone to marry you. But I'm not telling you to go up to a total stranger you've never met before. Start with someone who is already in your circle. Someone you know, but you don't know deeply. Remember, 60% of us admit to being lonely. That means that the odds are in your favor that the other person is looking for a friend too. And maybe the other person gets weirded out. Maybe they're like, ah, what, what is this? That's the worst that can happen. Even if they diss you for a lunch date, you still get to have lunch, bring a book, order dessert, sit for that second cup of coffee, and then try again. Remember the other lesson from a few episodes ago? Aim for failure. Put it out there. It's time for us to take action to beat this friendship recession. One person. Start with just one person. Look, it's scary. I feel you. I, I do. I really do. If you don't know what to say, here, you can borrow my words. Grab a pencil and a piece of paper and write this down. You could say, hey, so this is really awkward because we only see each other eh, every now and then at the coffee shop or wherever. But maybe we can hang out and get our dogs together sometime. Maybe we can go play tennis or whatever sometime. Okay, I know. It's kind of corny. I, I get it. And I cringed while even saying it myself. But you know what? So what? <laughs> So what? I mean, what if, what if that person that you're speaking with, what if that person has been internally begging for someone to even just say hi to them, much less ask them how their day was and would they like a coffee and maybe, maybe even a chocolate chip cookie. I mean, the thing is, we never know what someone else is going through. They could be having the worst day ever. And your act of kindness could be just the thing they need to turn their day around. And suddenly, suddenly, two people have a new friend. Don't be afraid to strike up a conversation with someone. It's a conversation, not a marriage proposal. And secondly, what is something you love to do? Because more than likely, there's someone else in your town that loves it just as much. One of the best ways to meet others with similar interest and is a great way to give back to your community and make a difference in the lives of others, you know the word, volunteer. But with so many different organizations and causes to choose from, Chad, it could be so hard to know where to start. That's okay, because luckily, there are a number of online resources that can help you find the right fit. Websites like volunteermatch.org. Again, that's volunteermatch, all in word, .org, And justserve.org. Again, justserve. Org. These two websites alone, they list opportunities in your area. You can search by location, by keywords, by type of work, whatever you're looking to do. Whether you're 
wanting to tutor elementary school students or help with um, Habitat for Humanity, there is probably a perfect opportunity for you. And guess what? You might just find yourself making a lasting difference, not only in the world, but in your neighborhood too. Just as we're talking about making a positive impact in our communities and protecting ourselves from the feeling of loneliness by connecting with others, there's another kind of protection we shouldn't overlook, our digital privacy. Let's take a break. In a world where our personal information is constantly at risk, taking steps to safeguard our data is so important. That's why I want to talk to you about Incogni. They are tackling a problem that's becoming all too common, but remains under the radar for many of us. I have to be honest, I was blown away, being very serious. All of our personal information is just up for grabs, everything from our financial details to our shopping habits. Data brokers collect and sell your personal information, which can end up in the hands of anyone, including cyber criminals. The good news? You can actually take action to protect your privacy. The challenge, however, is that reaching out to these data brokers individually could take years of your time. That's where Incogni comes in. They work on your behalf to request the removal of your personal data from these brokers, handling any pushback and ensuring your data stays off the market with ongoing removal efforts. Imagine having a team constantly ensuring your private information remains just that, private. And the best part, Incogni keeps you in the loop with reports and the progress they're making and keeping your data safe. For Comment Down listeners, Incogni is offering an exclusive deal. Use the code CALMIT, C-A-L-M-I-T, at incogni.com backslash comment to get 60% off an annual plan. Yes, 60% off. Just by taking a simple step towards reclaiming your digital privacy. Don't let your personal information be a commodity in the data market. Take control with Incogni. Guys, it was unbelievable how much stuff was out there. I was shocked. Protecting our personal information online is just as crucial as nurturing our real world connections. Now, getting back to how we can continue to foster these meaningful relationships. Embracing solitude doesn't necessarily have to usher in loneliness. Imagine how rich our life would be when we open ourselves up to the possibilities around us. It could be as simple as joining a new interest group or sharing a smile with a passerby on your morning walk. Every small gesture of connection to seed planted for a new friendship that could flourish in ways you never anticipated. These connections, they don't just fill our calendars, they fill our hearts. They bring laughter on days that are covered in gray, offering a, just a listening ear during times of difficulty. Right? And they provide a different perspective when we find ourselves at a crossroads. Friendships like these add so much depth to our lives that solo experiences can't. So I want to remind you, don't forget about the power of reaching out. The world is so much more receptive than we think it is. Your next great friend could be just around the corner or maybe in the next book club meeting or just in line at the coffee shop. And what's really fascinating, the person that you will be in these friendships, just waiting, waiting to emerge. So dare to make the first move. The universe is teeming with potential connections. We get it that way. Each one an opportunity to just make life rich. This is not about feeling silence with noise. It's about enriching our lives with the presence of others, others who want to understand, who want to challenge us, who also want to celebrate us. Don't let the fear of of reaching out hold you back. Embrace this. Embrace the new paths and the companionships. Reach out 
take a chance and discover just how full and rewarding life can be when others are around. The world is waiting with open arms and endless possibilities. To find more episodes of Comet Down, see where I may be appearing in your area, or just simply want to know where to send me some chocolate chip cookies, visit gometdownpodcast.com. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and not intended, nor should they, serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other health care provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you. And you should only act upon the advice of this physician. Now, I'm an extreme empath by nature. But my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this in future podcast episodes to aid those needs. So to find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CometDownPodcast.com. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review, or better yet, share it with a friend. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come, as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of mental and emotional health. Thank you for listening. Thank you for living. And until next time, be kind to your mind and join me again as we calm it down.